Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to another episode of Make Better. I know it's been a while, uh, but the last Let Me Know When You Get Home Safe was a little poppy because of the road, and also I've had a couple of not so great things happen in my life, so I just didn't really feel up to recording a half hour episode of of the card ride home and the worry that it would just start to get kind of negative and complainy so i figured that i'd make a quick catch-up episode of make better it's been a while since i did that and you know that way i can just focus on some of the more positive things that have happened and try to figure out what i might want to do for future episodes but yeah basically it was a pretty decent weekend we I, I went to Dad's house to grab some stuff, so he's in the process of trying to, you know, clean stuff out of his house, and he was like, all right, so any books and or VHS tapes that you want to try and grab, as well as a cabinet that he had built when he was in woodshop class, and I was just like, absolutely, anything that you have built by hand, I want to make sure that... I hold on to, so we already got a uh, wooden box, a you know wooden, I, I guess, I keep wanting to call it a painting, but it's just technically a wooden relief of a sailboat, and both of them match, so I wanted to have the matching set. This is just a cool looking little, not cabinet, but organizer, I don't know the proper terms for it, and I'm worried too much about what the proper terms are, so I won't stop worrying about it. So... He got a chance to meet the new addition to the family, Bebop, and, you know, we get to hang out, catch up a little bit, and it was pretty cool because not only were there a couple of series, like, so I definitely got the whole reading thing from him, not that mom doesn't read, but dad was absolutely the reader of the family, and he's amassed a gigantic, you know, majority of it is sci-fi fantasy, uh, collection over the years so he has a whole wall of his man cave that is dedicated to simply his book collection to the point where it's double faced meaning that i would have to take stacks of books out to see the books behind them in order to try and grab them and i some of it's overwhelming some of these people just churned out so many books that you would literally have to have an entire length of shelf in order to get just one series of a saga <clears throat> and i didn't know that i'd necessarily want to delve down that rabbit hole I was this close to asking him, hey, can you, rec you know the ones that I like, so could you recommend one that I would prefer? And I didn't even want to go down that rabbit hole because I was worried that he was just going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 you should check out this author. And that author would have like 50 books under his name. So I just more went for the ones that I had either already gone through and knew that I liked or that I had started and knew that I wanted to continue. For instance, I've only ever read, I believe, the first half of Frank Herbert's Dune series, and it's clearly such a staple science fiction novel that just set the bar for all the following ones that they just keep trying to remake it. It's been a movie, a miniseries, and now a movie again, which is only the first part of the... I, I guess I guess the movie ends kind of abruptly in the middle, and it you know plans to go on, but there's a bunch of other books made. What I didn't do is that his son found notes about the whole Dune, like, he, he created a whole universe, and so his son actually found the notes for, uh, you know, what he'd been planning to do, and so he actually wrote a whole other series of Dune novels uh, just based on that alone. So I didn't want to delve down that rabbit hole un unless I've, you know, digested all of the Dune series and just be been so hungry for more. But I really would like to get into reading again. And it kind of got me thinking about, like, how, you know, everybody's just, like, looking down at their phones, and, uh, well, people used to always just be, like, you know, their nose buried in a book, but it's kind of different. Um, th there's a difference between being fed visual content, you know, just, and, and just, like, you know, one thing after another so that your attention span is, is nil, whereas being able to just read the written word and using your, your head to imagine the world and being able to continue on with the story for an entire fat, fat novel, and remembering events and callbacks and stuff, like, kind of like a really well-written uh, stand-up set, because I'm just such a one-dimensional guy, 
I, it always comes back to comedy dogs or, or, you know, like three things in my life. But, you know, like a really well-written stand-up set, you know, you could uh, do a joke early on in the set and then towards the end, the punchline of the one of the final jokes is just a callback to the original. It's a lot like that with books where it's just like they set up so much stuff that you can reread the book and you can be like, oh my god, that was such good foreshadowing. I, it was setting it up and it, it, it was like screaming it in my face, but I didn't notice until the end and that's a great novel. So I grabbed a, you know, a whole box and a half of that and then I grabbed a bunch of VHSs. Some of them... It's funny that it's such a, a a dead medium, but there's a lot of movies nowadays that you can't get without, you just can't get anymore, and, and, and it stinks. It's like a lot of them, uh, they're lost in licensing limbo or whatever, or uh, here's a great example, like for instance, you know, I think Kevin Smith's Dogma, you you just can't get anymore. It's They're not making any new DVDs or, or putting it out on any kind of streaming service. Because it was under the Weinstein Company, and you know how, how that whole thing went down. So it's just kind of lost as far as the copyright issues go. And so because of that, you know, now DVDs of Dogma are, are you know, you can actually get a pretty penny for somebody who's really desperate to add it to their collection if they don't have it. So I, I believe that one of them was Cocoon, uh, a movie about, uh, it's kind of a science fiction-y movie about, you know, old people that can get young again, uh, and, and and it's just some it's 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 wi widely regarded as a really well done movie, but it's just something that it isn't in print anymore. And so I know that he has a copy of it. I asked him, I, I went through his wall real quick, and I didn't see it. And I, I'm hoping that he can find it again. But <clears throat> it's one that always went under my radar. I I've never seen the thing all the way through, and I'd be really cool to see. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, one of those is Time Bandits, and that is a weird one. That that's a wild one. If you've never seen it. That that is a, a unique movie. Um, it's one of those kind of British ones that you know it doesn't have to end on a good note necessarily every time, uh, but sometimes you just appreciate for the adventure. So I grabbed that, and I found two tapes that that you always want to keep in the family, and I hope that we can transfer it to digital medium. But one of them was a tape that uh, Grandpa made for us of Arizona. He had his camcorder, and so he would show the property and, uh, you know, just be like, you know, so this is the property that you've never been to, because at the time we hadn't been. Now we'd make it a point to go every year, but it was, this is the property, and so, you know, this is my garden that I'm doing, and, uh, you know, we did a video of, uh, you know, the downtown area that I that we absolutely don't want to lose, and that's one that Dad uh, held on to so that he could, could, I don't think they even realized that was a thing, because... You know, back when I was a kid, it was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But it lasts about half an hour. And when I was busy transferring movies and, and shows that I liked onto tape, I realized that, oh, there's a half hour of Grandpa's video. But, you know, the movie Saving Private Ryan is on the, the movie channel. So I want to record Saving Private Ryan onto it. So I would I fast forwarded to the end of the Arizona tape. And so after Grandpa's Arizona tape, there's Saving Private Ryan. And I'm pretty sure... That a similar thing happened. I have yet to actually look at the VHS, but there's Fiddler on the Roof as well as a few other movies, and I'm pretty sure that it's not the movie Fiddler on the Roof. I'm pretty sure it's my stage, uh, high school stage play of Fiddler on the Roof, where I played um, Fiedka, I believe, was the character's name. He's the soldier that woos the third daughter uh, of uh, Tevya, and so. I would really like to be able to re-watch that and see just how cringy my acting was back in high school, where about, like, three lines out of the entire, uh, out of the entire play that I actually tried to affect a accent. But, um, stuff like that, you know, obviously you don't just want to throw away, you know, that's personal. And, yeah, there's just a couple, uh, other ones that I grabbed, but, um, so that was cool. Um, it's, it's been rare that I've been able to see him just kind of like one-on-one, -on -one, which doesn't, you know, usually happen. And so that, so Saturday was for dad and it, it wasn't planned this way, but then Sunday was for mom because her birthday was uh, the 31st. So, um, sorry, the 21st. So on the 20th, the day before, because, you know, unfortunately her birthday fell on a Monday, uh, we, you know, had a birthday day. So she came over 
and it was Maple Weekend in uh, New England, so New Hampshire rather, so we went to all the places nearby that tap the trees to make maple syrup, and you get, you know, some free samples, and you grab, you know, a jug of uh, the maple syrup, or they have some maple-themed, you know, pastry item, or, or what have you, and talk to them a little bit. <coughs> One of them had this cool dog called Boomer that had a GPS collar on because he's a Brittany that just likes to run about 10 to 12 miles a day in the property that they have chasing squirrels and stuff. So they keep an eye on him with a GPS collar, which is really neat. And so it was super affectionate. It would come up to everybody to get pets. And being a former dog trainer, I would, you know, talk to her, talk shop about, you know, dogs and stuff with her. Talked about our dogs that we didn't take on the Maple Weekend, unfortunately. Last time we took Lilu and it was fine, but this time both of them are, are slightly injured and injured is a strong word, but you know, both of them, um, basically with him, he can't, um, so Bebop, I don't know if I mentioned in, uh, let me know when you get home safe, but he has at the very end of his ear, he had a pretty big scab that through their, their playtime, the, the scab came off and it, you know, kind of made it raw again. And with his head shaking, ear scratching and playtime, we keep trying to treat it, and it keeps on not healing. Similar thing with her. The skin around her eye is now kind of raw and open for similar reasons. We think because we were trying, uh, we, we, we try out new foods with her just to see, just to narrow down what it is that she might be allergic to as far as food goes. Because she definitely has a food allergy, but we can't figure out quite exactly what it is. So it definitely isn't grains. She actually seems to do a lot better on grain food than grain free. I've gotten into rants about that you know, in other episodes. So, you know, just grain free is great if they're allergic to grains. Otherwise, don't do grain free. It isn't necessarily a better food. In fact, you could be causing a grain allergy just through not being exposed to grains. But she does great with grains, uh, doesn't seem to do good with particular types of meat. Chicken, she actually does good with, which is surprising because a lot of dogs are allergic to chicken because most dog foods were originally made with chicken. I'm getting into a rant again about it. So just watch my other videos if you want to learn more about that. But basically because of the skin around her eye already being kind of like, you know, raw, exposed and kind of sensitive and the way that they play, he does a lot of paw action, much like her. And even though we keep his nails nice and trimmed, I mean, the, the pad of the paw is still pretty rough. You know, you still have a little bit of nail no matter how much you grind it down. So it seems to just keep on reopening that, not to mention the fact that she's now, you know, scratching what is obviously a, probably a painful slash itchy spot on her face. So... Um, we try and we keep on trying to treat both of those things as best as we can. We keep on, you know, re neosporing and, you know, like liquid bandaging, hit, you know, his ear and you can't do liquid bandage around the eyes. So we keep on putting neosporin around her eye. And, um, you know, it's gotten to the point where we had to buy a cone, but, you know, we're torn because we don't want to keep them from playing with each other because that's the whole point of getting another dog is that we love that they get along. We love that they play, that they play nicely they don't get too heated over it, but they also play roughly, which is fine, except for the fact that, you know, we've, if they were wolves, then they wouldn't have any problems. We've bred them to have thin, thinner fur, so less protection against the skin, and now they just, it just never gets a chance to heal, and we don't want to have her, you know, eventually just get a scar where it's like she has like a battle scar around her eye because she already looks like she has a little bit of pity in her, and we don't want to have people like, you know, look, look at a, you know, battle scarred pit mix and you know not want to go up and say hi so we're desperately trying to get that under control so we didn't take them for maple weekend which is kind of a bummer but also it was the muddiest maple weekend that we've ever had to deal with so they would have come back absolutely filthy they would have gotten the car filthy going in and out we would have had gone through so many like you know wipes and rags that it was just a good idea to just let them kind of settle at home heal up and then um after we did maple weekend you know we went uh, back home let them out for a breather and then um, we all went to uh, eat dinner and then, you know, um, tried to get mom home uh, before it got too dark because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even what I would consider middle-aged and I'm already starting to have a bit of an issue driving at night. Uh, the headlight amperage is getting absolutely out of control where, you know, somebody passes by you on a road. And you, you lose a lot of your night vision until it comes back. Even if you do the trick of you, you look at the white line, not the yellow line, but the white line, you look as far away. So if you're on the, if you're looking at the white line, there's no chance that you're going to be going off road 
But um, I made the mistake when I first started driving that at night, you see the headlights and you're keeping an eye on the headlights. You unintentionally actually drift towards the headlights without even meaning to. You're just trying to keep an eye on the car, making sure where they are. But because your head's going towards that direction, you're, your arms do too. So what you want to do is you want to look at the white line on the opposite side of the road. And then that way only your peripheral is getting hit by the light. You get your night vision back a lot faster. And I've been using the uh, yellow um, eyeglasses. But the yellow glasses don't work well for everybody. So they don't work well for her. So she likes to try and get home before it gets too dark. I don't blame her. So uh, it would have been nice to have a little bit longer with her. But it is what it is. So overall, great weekend. You know, and then, you know, back back to the grind on uh, on Monday. Um, you know, we're going to figure out our stuff as far as the, uh, the other things are going and I'll probably update you when I have more of an idea about how that's going. But yeah, that's why you're getting a make better as opposed to a, let me know when you get home safe. And, uh, overall, you know, it, it's hard to complain when you have some good days as well as bad. Sometimes it seems like all you're getting is the bad days and it's not letting up and life is just not giving you even just a, a you know, a modicum of relief. So I try to appreciate the small moments where we had a good time. And so, yeah, um, this, this day and age, un unless you, because of the economy, you're forced to move back in with your parents. A lot of times you don't really have as much time for them. So it was kind of nice to be able to see dad and mom in, you know, relatively, uh, good circumstances and, you know, the other stuff that life has thrown at us, we're going to deal with as it comes and try and make the best of it. And that's all anybody can hope for. So hopefully you had at least a decent day or two since I've last talked to you. And if not, I, I hope that you can find some relief somewhere. And, you know, just hold out until it gets better. Because that's about all you can do sometimes. And that's what we're going to try and do. So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to do dishes, start dinner. Try and get a decent night's sleep, which is one of the hardest things. It seems like the older you get, you're getting a decent night's sleep. Uh, first of all, you, th there's this... I can't remember what the actual thing is called, but um, a lot of people have horrible nights because they don't go to bed eight hours before they need to wake up. And the reason why is because you spend a lot of your day working and or choring, and you stay up because the nighttime is all you really have control over. So you want to stay up, especially if you have a significant other, and you want to watch a show together. You want to be able to talk about your day. You want to take charge of a little bit of your life that you feel like you still have left. And then you end up missing out on sleep and then having a miserable morning. And then the, the pattern repeats itself. So I'm, um, you know, try to get better about doing that. But oftentimes, more often than not, we pass out on the couch watching a TV show. We wake up with our necks cricked. And now it's like midnight or one o'clock. And then we got to, you know, put the dogs, uh, you know, peed into bed. And then now we only have a few hours before it's time to wake up in the morning. And it's just a horrible pattern that we're trying not to repeat. But I know that that's what a lot of us are going through right now. So, um, you know, we're working on it. Hopefully you are too. But just know that you're not alone. And yeah, that's about all I can say for today. It definitely went longer than I originally thought. Even staying away from the bad subjects, I ended up killing almost 20 minutes. So it was pretty similar to a uh, let me know when you get home safe. Hopefully you appreciated it, and it was not too rambling and nonsensical. But I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time.